What's up, what's good? You know what it is. Lina Lamikitsi Amos Faneke Wachatau, and I'm from Soweto Snake Park, and this is the Game Theory Show. The streets know me as Jazz underscore Free Love. So, what is the Game Theory Show? The Game Theory is basically um, a show about, you know, how everybody's just trying to get to the le- next level in life. Everybody's just trying to level up, everybody's trying to get to the top. And everybody has their own individual way of doing things, of how they want to get to the top. And personally, that is going to be your own game theory. So this show is tailored for artists, and they're going to be telling us about their, how they're playing the game and how their game theory works. So today we're going to be with uh, Urasta Silas, the painter. He's a very talented painter, very prominent. He stands out from um, most painters in our country. And we're going to be in his studio and he's going to be telling us about how he does things, how he works, what inspires him, and a lot more things we don't know about him. It's going to be very interesting. So yeah, let's run it up. Yeah, man, greetings. Rasta Farai. Um, my name is Silas Motsi, well known as Rasailas Motsi. Um, I'm from Taban Chumutata Kuskut Mpad. And yeah, that's me. Well, for a living, um, <laughs> I'm a teacher, <laughs> a full time teacher at the um, government school. And yeah, and then um, for, for art, I've been doing art, I think I can say, since crash where we used to paint on small blocks of you know canvases and yeah and then um, um, the other part is that um, just to uh, give clarity is that I do um, you know all different forms of art it's not like maybe specifically I'm doing uh, drawing I do drawing I do painting you know I do ceramics I do sculpture I do animation I do cartoons so there's a whole lot of uh, art forms that I that I actually do. Yes, sir. How are you? So, um, for the longest of time, I've been, uh, you know, I chose to, uh, you know, eliminate other art forms like ceramics and sculpture and stuff like that so that I can focus more into drawing. I, I think the reason why I chose drawing is more, you know, connected to, uh, to me as, as an artist. You know, normally it's more easy for me to meditate and also, you know, create work when I'm using, you know, pencils and paper and stuff like that. So I think the, the meditation part and the flowing of, of pencil and, you know, and yeah, I think it's, it's, it's what made me choose um, drawing out of the other uh, um, art forms. <laughs> so my worst fear, I think um, this will go to each and every artist. Number one, the fear of finishing an artwork and then it get damaged. That's the most biggest fear ever. <laughs> and then for me personally, oh, I fear Babylon, the state. That's my worst fear. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, the biggest achievement, it was the State of the Arts Gallery Award that I just won currently. And number two was um, uh, my journey to the United States, which is was one of the awesome journeys. And then uh, three, I can talk about commissions that I currently, you know, um, uh, commissioned for to do. Like for instance, Wazanai from the U- United Nations, Turquoise uh, Institute, Mazars. And number four, I think Kitareki, um, the pieces that I've sold currently out of my solo exhibition that was hosted go uh, A to, uh, um, uh, art space, which was, I saw about around, I think, seven artworks that I sold. Yeah, so, yeah, the list is endless. So, <laughs> yeah, bless. The connection between me and my art in three words. Number one, vibrant, detailed, meditation. Last of all, right. Yes, I, um, yeah, guys, uh, welcome to the studio. Welcome to my studio. Um, yeah, uh, for me to, uh, you know, um, take you deeper into my world is, um, first of all, I'm more like a spiritual artist. You know, I don't, I don't just draw anyone, unfortunately. And um, yeah, and then um, connection goes deep where I need to do preliminary studies before I can start a piece. So what I normally do is I read about 
what is happening currently now and what happened before to try and connect and try to you know look for a solution so for instance for like this particular piece um uh you know i've utilized a technique called minimalism you know to talk about contemporary sitting and um also um, the sitting board which um heavily influence you know going green recycling and and so forth and then also what i used to is i used pastels chalk you know paint you know it helps me to you know to flow it helps me when i when i meditate so when i go to meditate you know when i when i flow when i try to find answers it's you know it's more simple it's more you know trying to fight my battles that i'm experiencing now and trying to assist maybe the next person which is the viewer to my work to understand and to also you know you know get into the hype of what i'm actually doing yeah so yeah man. Uh, okay so we're finally here with the man that is silas uh, it's nice to meet you, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. So um, I've been checking out your art for a while now and um, I can say I'm very impressed. And so uh, I have a couple of questions for you. So um, I want to know, Jorge, uh, how did you start your, uh, painting and drawing and, and how was the experience for you? Like when you did your first painting, how was the experience? Yeah, it, it, you know, sometimes, uh, um, you know, we as artists, we've got different stories to, stories to tell about where you started as an artist and stuff like that. But for me, art was more like a savior. You know, it came in into my life whereby um, I lost my parents. Um, you know, I'm alone and I've got a younger brother that I need to raise and stuff like that. So uh, for me, I used to, you know, go around into different people's houses, try to paint, their, you know, their house numbers. Mm go to Kirakia West and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So that's how art stayed into my life that, you know, it gave me a purpose to go forward. And then, it, you know, it also gave me that little money and I can or at least so that's how, that's how art came to me. And then it all started from crash, like, you know, you go crash and you paint and get paint. That's how, so, yeah, so that's how it started. Um, okay, I'm also um, fascinated about your religion. Right yeah. about you being a Rastafarian, and tell me more about that and how it contributes to you to you to you as an artist. Yeah, you know, Rastafarian is not something that I would say I grew up being. A, I grew up, uh, you know, fully fledged as a Rasta man. Mm -hmm. But then it it's, it's 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 something that came later into my life, whereby I you know got to understand and then realize and get knowledge on how mm -hmm. you know to push a way of living and where when it comes to you know things like eye tile, how what to eat, you know, how to speak to people and then what to think, you know, yeah, so how that's how Rastafarianism has, you know, mm. came into my life. Yeah. So it's it's a way of life. Okay. Okay, so um do you have any inspirational icons? And if so, how do they inspire your art? Like people who do what you do but who have been there before you who inspire what you do. And if yes, how do they inspire your art? Yeah. You know I wouldn't say that I have one person that is, is that's, which you know inspires my art. Mm. There's whole different kind of people and movements into the art that inspires. And then especially currently, now I'm working with um, part of minimalism. Mm. That's that's what inspires my work. But one person that inspires me a lot is Wiley Riley. He's based in the uh, United States of America, but then he's from. I'm not sure where he's. Nigerian or Canadian, but then, yeah, so okay. those are the, those, that is the person that is heavily inspired in my work. Okay, okay, interesting, very interesting. So I understand you have been um, overseas a couple of times. Um, tell us about your experiences. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, overseas, overseas, like, 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 you like, you know, you go to another country and then you realize and then you see things, you know, it's, the experience is, is, is extraordinary. I got to meet people that, you know, you know, gave me more content of what I need to do. Like for instance, now the book that I have, the middle passage, I was given by one of my friends, um, Waltrina, mm. uh, from from uh, New Haven, Connecticut. So she gave me that, and like Silas, I know you're someone that is in search of knowledge. The reason why you came to this side is because of you want to learn more and how to enhance and how to better my knowledge mm. when I come back to South Africa, just you know, to contribute. 
to alleviate you know social economic issues mm. so the experience is out of this world out of this world unless like the other one that was <laughs> uh, you know phenomenal when i went to the united states was no, the cars on the left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the left That's right. one thing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. struggling. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. But then it's been good. It's good. Okay, bless up, bless up. Yes. So, um, if you were not an artist right now, what would you be doing? <laughs> working for Babylon, of course. <laughs> Babylon is the is the state, mm. the government. I was going to be working for the government. You know, brainwashed, and yeah, that's. I think that's that's what. The biggest, yeah, the mm. second option as a teacher. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So, as an artist, what is your end game? What, 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 what are you trying to achieve? What, is, what is your end game? Man, as a, as a, as an artist, you don't end. You know, the the, the issues detail like every day. So you keep on working. You keep on, you know, um, you know giving people an idea on how to solve their everyday life and as, as long as humanity still evolves you know i'm still going to be there and i will still be creating art unless you know survive but i will still be here okay bless up, bless up. yes sir okay so what are the challenges that come with being an artist who does what you do and um how do you overcome them yeah um you know of course the first will be money, you know, um, especially only an artist along with Pela Mukas, you know, there's no access to, um, uh, you know, resources that you can use uh, that can, you know, bear food for you. For like, for instance, for me, you know, I used to struggle to buy paper mm. and I ended up now reverting to, you know, the second seating board. So I go for the seating board and then, you know, that's how, and yeah, um, that is the first one. The second one will be, you know, um, the spaces to showcase. Mm. You know, we all know that the galleries are, all of them, they are in the CBD, mm. that side of, of the north. So yeah. that is the problem. We don't have a place where you will say, I've done this and I would like to communicate with, uh, with, the, with the community. So that is uh, one of the biggest challenges that we're facing right now. And then also, the third one is, um, you know, people to support you. And when you, like, your question, you know, um, you know Made me think of the different ages of artists. You've got artists that are still in school, that are, you know, they didn't have that particular, you know, encouragement of their parents. Because the parents didn't understand what is art. They will ask you, hey, what are you doing? So those are the things that, um, you know, they are a major, a major, you know, uh, word block to different people that are trying to be so hard. Okay, so uh, I'd like to know, Ore, uh, do you have uh, a favorite painting? And if so, which one is it? Yeah, my favorite and painting <laughs> yeah. um, is the one that I um, um, unfortunately sold right now. I don't have it. Okay. Um, it's sold to Rene. It's, it was a picture that was inspired by um, the situation that was happening at home where uh, my mother was, my mother used to be abused by my father. Mm. So it's a picture of a lady lying down after being, you know, abused. You know, it, it, it connects me to what is happening in South Africa right, currently now about the gender-based violence and how females are, you know, are going through a whole lot of gender-based violence that is happening to them right now. So yeah, that is my favorite, one of my favorite paintings. Okay, so um, the last question is gonna be, uh, if the whole world was listening, Right, the whole world was listening, and you could say one thing, what would it be? Consciousness. Be conscious. Mm, deep, deep. Okay, so you heard it from the man himself. Uh, that's Silas. It was nice to meet you. It was nice having a conversation with you. And yeah, we're out. <laughs>